Why it's important to discover their why is because that why is going to be the reason why they give you the trust or take action or do ur or create kind of that urgency that you need from them. But more importantly, when you discover their why, you're isolating their attention to look at you in a different light. Whereas most sales agents are not doing that. All, most sales agents, most of our competitors are primarily built in one, in one way to operate. And it's going to be based on like, hey, I got the lowest rate, I got the lowest fees. If you're saying that right now, and that's your way of keeping the prospect more engaged with you, you're actually setting yourself up for failure because it's anchored based on rate and fees. Very similar to if, if you start your sales pitch off with saying, hey, I got a couple options, you're actually anchoring yourself for more, for more resistance. You just don't realize it. Because when the prospect hears, I got, more op I got a couple options, you've actually anchored that as saying, okay, well, I could say yes or no. Does that make sense? Where the wordplay is, is important, you could simply switch the wordplay. And instead of saying, hey, I got a couple options, you could say, hey, I got an idea. I want to run it by you real quick just to make sure, you know, before I even send it out, get your feedback on it. The reason why that's effective is because who wants, you know, curiosity. Whenever someone says, hey, I got an idea, you're kind of curious, right? But more importantly, I've said, hey, I want your feedback on it so it's not an option. I'm at more, more importantly, it's not being viewed at as them being pitched. Whereas if I open the conversation and say, hey, uh, John, I, I put the numbers together and I got a couple options for you. Grab a pen and paper. And you guys start your pitch that way? No? Okay, good. <laughs> good. Well, most, most agents in the refinance world do. Um, but where, where I'm getting at and what we should probably take away from it is understanding how you're initiating the engagement. And if you initiate the engagement in a specific way, like, hey, uh, thanks for calling New American Funding. We got the lowest rate and lowest fees. We're actually anchoring the engagement to just be designed around rates and fees. Same way with our pitch. Hey, I got a couple options for you. Grab a pen and paper. If they don't like option number one, they're going to be waiting for option number two and they're not going to listen to anything that you have to say. Does that make sense? Now, besides the way the besides the wordplay being important, it's also the sequential order of how you deliver the information. So let me give you an example. Um, the one of the one of the main objections that we get in, in, in doing our pitches is rate and fees. Right. That's primary. Their main reason like, oh, I wanted a lower rate. I wanted the lower fees. And typically the reason why we get that objection is because we open it up in a specific way. The order that we deliver the information, the order that we deliver the content of the, of the communication, meaning, meaning like most, let me give you an example. Most pitches go like this. Hey, I got option one, which is 5.5%, no lender fees, and I can bring your payment to here, which would then, and then we go into the benefits. But the problem with that is though, and what I found, at least what I've learned, is that when they hear something that they don't agree with, they mute you out. Make sense? So the problem with that is when we open up the conversation in that way, they're not actually hearing the benefit. Whereas if we just simply switched it around and instead of saying, hey, I got a couple options, like, hey, you know what? Hey, John, I got this idea. I want to run it by you first to get a, get a, get a feeling of, of where you're at. And this is the pitch call, for example, right? And ultimately what you're doing in the pitch call is actually re-enunciating. I hope that's a word. re It is? Okay, cool. Yeah. So to re-enunciate all of, all of their why, all of their why factors. And so like, you know, I'm going to, of course, reference refinance, but you can put two and two together and reference purchase in your own creative way. Um, but, but typically the reason why they do a refinance is because they need an answer. They need a solution to something. And what, our, what I've discovered is that our prospects typically ask for the lowest rate and lowest fees because they're wired to do that. They believe that the only way that they can create savings is by lowering their rate. Does that make sense? So the only way that I can create $300 savings is if I lower my 3.5% rate because they're not licensed like we are. They're not in the industry like we are, right? And sometimes we, can, we forget to get creative and use things like, uh, like well, you're going to get a payment deferral plus an escrow refund when we do this loan. And so what that's going to do, like for this time of year, for example, they have a huge um, escrow balance, at least in California, because of their taxes and insurance, right? 
And sometimes we don't even mention that at the time of pitching the loan. But that's actually money that we could use. And if we help them spend it and, and make, it, uh, make it logical, make it make sense, they'll actually agree with it. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. And so, for example, instead of saying, hey, I got option number one, five and a half, no lender fees, your payment comes down to here, and this is going to, and then benefit, 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 you can actually pre-frame them. Again, it's very important to pre-frame them and ultimately get them in a position where they need you and they're more curious with, with, with what information is to come and how they get that, you know, how they get that solution. And so by pre-framing them, you mentioned things like, hey, you know, you mentioned in our first conversation that it was important to you to create $300 in payment savings because you had, you had said that you had uh, $500 that you pay per month on credit card debt and you needed to create some monthly savings so you can rid the credit card debt, right? Sometimes we forget to kind of uh, apply that reason why or the information that we share with them to the exact reason why they need the lower rate. Instead, we become so focused on rate and payment that we kind of block out the whole reason why they need the lower rate and payment to begin with. Where if you can create a bond with your prospect in a way that no other salesperson does, and what I mean by that is you're actually telling them that you listen to them, you're going to set yourself apart from all the other lenders and all the other prospects, right? So, so but, but what happens is we sometimes, and it's not your guys' fault, it's just, it's just the way we operate. And until you actually discover some of these philosophies and it's like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Like we hear it all the time, but sometimes it, you know, it, just, it takes a certain way to hear it to say, oh yeah, that, that does make sense. And what it really comes down to is people buy for, for a reason and that primary reason is to solve a, a pain, right? So in my, in, in my opinion, I think any sales transaction, whether you're selling a consumer, you're selling your spouse, you're selling you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you're selling anyone on any message, there has to be upside for that person to buy from you. Does that make sense? And so the greatest upside that you can kind of highlight is, is again, applying your solution, your product, your rate, your, your payment to how it actually solves the, the whole purpose of them wanting the lower rate to begin with but get creative in a way where it's not actually anchored to a rate or a fee. Make sense? And so when you, when you get down to it and you understand that this person needs, needs uh, a lower rate, well, the reason is what, you know, the, the question is, well, why? And sometimes we, we just take that request and just run with it. So, okay, cool, this guy needs a lower rate. What rate do you got? Three and a half, boom, we're kind of defeated. Because we just saw the rate sheet and the rate sheet's at five, right? Or the rate sheet's at 4.75. And so therefore, we don't necessarily go into it with, with uh, enthusiasm that we should have. Because we're like, man, this dude's never going to buy. Let me hurry up and get off this phone call, <laughs> right? Mr. Patel's never going to pay sixteen twenty nine, right? This guy's never going to refinance his three and a half. But if you give it time and you realize that his three and a half on an FHA is actually 4.35, then you can't actually put two and two together and educate this person on why it's effective to refinance out of FHA and get into, get into a conventional. 